Hello and welcome to Hobson Bros. This week, we're coming back to America. For an open window on a crappy world Max and Chris from Ups and Brews Ups and Brews Welcome to Ups and Brews Alright, so before we jump into this week's lesson, I have a little, little, little thing to mentioned to you guys and it's our fantastic partners at my brew hq if you don't know about them yet and you're new to the channel they are a home brew supply chain um, located in nova scotia here in canada they offer fantastic service great equipment so it's the perfect time for you to step up your own brew game or just to upgrade what you already have as a setup but before you go on to their website just Please note this fantastic code BRO, it gives you a 10% off on your first ever purchase on their website. They support the show, you visiting them support them, and they support the show on this way. It's fantastic, it's a win-win situation for everyone, so if you have the opportunity or you're in the market to upgrade your own brew setup, go visit brewhq.ca, mybrewhq.ca, right there in the description. Thanks. All right, so this week we decided to complete our trilogy with a fourth movie, a fourth installment coming back to America with American IPAs. Because, I mean, that never fail, fail, right? If you have a trilogy, add another movie, and it's going to be a success. To which point, which is your favorite Die Hard? For me, i got to go with the first one. The first one is the best, closely followed by the third. Anything after that is not very good. So let us know in the comments below which Die Hard movie you preferred. I know it's a little weird. We usually go beer questions, but eh, I know, I'm curious. Uh, so this week, American IPA, which is kind of the godfather of, of IPAs in general in America. Without the American IPA, without the classic style being brought back to life, you wouldn't have a lot of the beers that are on the market today. You certainly would not have had the Milkshake IPA. You wouldn't have the East Coast style IPA, the New England style IPA. You wouldn't have the uh, Brute IPA. There wouldn't be any other IPAs. Uh, so this is, is definitely one of the IPAs that really brought the rest. Uh, but anyways, Chris, what exactly is this? Where does it come from? Why? 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 So what is an American IPA? If I take all of you guys back into 1968 it's the born date of experimental up 56013 1968 it's the born date of cascade yes that famous op known for its citrus and grapefruit character but it's not just the born date of cascade it's the born date of a now to come craft beer revolution in the United States or in the Americas in general. So Cascade was first used in 1972 by a brewery called Anchor Steam. But all this was firstly commercialized in 1975 with their Liberty L. It was the first time that we were able to focus on the aromas from the ops instead of just boosting everything with big multi boozy beers and lots of bitterness. This is what we add in IPAs back in the day. But a few years later, folks at Sierra Nevada, yes, those guys that we talk in the great video about the Sierra Nevada Pale Ale, brewed Celebration Ale. An ale featuring Cascade, Centennial, and another hop, which really showcased and made Cascade shine to another level. This is where American IPAs were born. It really shook the industry the whole way and made it that today we're now able to experiment with different IPAs like the New England IPA, Milkshake IPA, Fried Chicken IPA, and it's kind of like getting crazy everywhere. What is very important to note is that American IPA really pushed craft beer on the world stage. I can make an easy comparison with Michael Jordan and basketball. He put the sport to another level. He put American IPAs put craft beer to another level on the world stage and quickly made United States one of the most known places around craft beer. Yes, obviously, we had the classic Pilsners from Germany and Bohemia, uh, Bohemia or Czech Republic, and also quad triples Belgian coming from Belgium, but all that didn't mean nothing back in those days. It 
quickly sparked a really, really large fire and had a very, very big impact on the brewing industry. One of those impacts is the up growing industry. It turned Yakima Valley into a million dollar business. I, I, I don't want to say billion because I'm, I don't have the exact numbers, but it turned those farmers creating Cascade, Centennial, Simcoe into up farmers that were experimenting into creating the juiciest, fruitiest ups around to pair with those American IPA. It became so big that recently US is known as the biggest hop grower in the world. That's, that's big. That's huge. And currently we're speaking as right now, breweries signing off contracts to get their ops two years in advance. Two years in advance. It's crazy. But having this revolution, this cascade, sparking up those citrus grapefruit aromas into those beers. I remember my first ever American IPA was Candidab from Zeu du Ciel. Yes, it's a little bit more malty, you get a lot of bitterness punching in, but yeah, you have those pine aromas, a little bit of citrus, grapefruit coming in, and it's, it's surprising. And as a beer drinker, as a new beer drinker, it was fun back in the day. But I think it's last year, I had a friend coming back from San Francisco, and he brought me back Pliny the Elder. So for me, it was kind of like a full circle thing. I started off with just this regular Count Job IPA, which was fantastic and a staple here in Quebec to kind of like loop it back to Pliny the Elder. Pliny is a fantastic beer and it really shook me to the core and changed my perception of what an American IPA should be and how great it is to kind of like taste it back. Because right now we're seeing a lot of those New England IPAs and obviously there's fantastic good stuff out there, but I'd be curious to see Cascade come back, make, make a shiny comeback. And I'm not saying that because I want to sell my fantastic crop this year, but I'd be curious to see more of that and just to kind of like a nod to the past and also a big thanks to this that sparked a fantastic industry that craft beer is today. But Max, if you're at home and you want to brew your own craft beer version of the American IPA, obviously, how can we do that? As I've mentioned earlier, uh, the, the American IPA is a classic style, at least for North America. Without that style, you wouldn't have all the other IPAs out there. Uh, that said, it, it very closely resembles uh, what the British style IPA was. It's just a, a kind of an American version of that beer in the sense that the classic American IPA was still very malty. It still had that kind of caramel, more uh, uh, copper uh, to, to almost brown backbone with a lot of bitterness to it and not a lot of complexity at least that was kind of the first iteration of this beer nowadays if you're brewing this beer uh, you kind of have to take under consideration the the public uh, take under consideration who is going to be drinking this and it's a population that has been drinking ipas and drinking fruitier ipas in america for a while so you still want a Turo backbone, uh, which is, I mean, it's a grain that is found in North America. It is, it is, again, all the ingredients here, they're all North American ingredients. That's kind of the goal of the American style IPA. So you got your Turo. You might want to add a bit of caramel depending on how dark you want it. Uh, I like using Vienna, which, which I guess is not an American uh, grain, but I like using something that has a bit of biscuit, a bit of caramel, but not much. I like my American IPAs to be on the lighter side, so more of a golden copper and not as you know as dark as your traditional american ipas uh and then when it comes to hopping that's where i would suggest using mostly north american ipa uh, hops uh so use you know cascade use citra use uh, um, a bunch of those a mosaic you know a bunch of those very iconic uh ipa ish type hops that will give you all the flavors you're looking for um i would definitely check out our, our, our other video we did a video on sierra nevada which it is a pale ale but it is an american style uh, pale ale american style ipa in some ways uh, and they use cascade which i think is a phenomenal hop and if you've watched the show before you know that we all love cascade here and if for a reason uh, cascade has a bunch of those great flavors in it without cascade you don't have citra you don't have mosaic 
and you don't have Centennial. You know, Centennial is another one of those very aromatic hops that has high IBUs and and are very good usage in this American style IPA because you are looking for a bit of that fruit. You're looking for a bit of more of that floral note, uh, and you're looking for bitterness. You're looking for kind of a balance, but not really. It's still, the beer's still going to be a little sweet, but it's going to be mostly on the bitter side at that point. Remember the triangle that I've been using a lot where you have your sweetness, you've got your bitterness, you've got your sourness. This one is definitely on this side here and is somewhere in between bitter and sweet with a little more on the bitter side. Um, at least that's what I would aim for. That's the American Style IPA. Let us know in comments below, uh, uh, A, which of your Die Hard movies is your favorite one, because Die Hard is definitely one of my favorites, uh, like, series in general. Anyways, uh, and, and let us know if you think that American IPAs are dead. It's not a style that you necessarily see a lot. A lot of breweries have them or have done them, but I've switched on to more popular IPAs. So uh, is this something that's going to keep going, or uh, is it a dead style? Let us know in the comments below. And as always, if you like the video, please leave a like, subscribe, share with your friends. Uh, yeah, it helps us. Any, anything you do, any, every view, every like, every share helps us a lot. See you guys in the next one.